Hi, I'm Pastor John Fleming of the Open Door Churches, uh, bringing a message uh, for and on behalf of the United Methodists of the Salem-Kaiser, Oregon area. It's been a little while since I have recorded one of these, uh, and over the past several weeks, I personally, as well as my family, and we as the Open Door Churches have um, have been encountering great, uh, great challenges, uh, as especially as a group of churches, as we have thought about what it means for us to begin to re-enter our sacred spaces, to have public gatherings again, especially as um, as the the shifting sands of the landscape around us are changing constantly. It's a really complicated process for us in particular because we have uh, we have multiple worshiping communities that are a part of the mix. And we started a conversation back in early April to get us to the point that we are now uh, and things are beginning to uh, to move. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But, uh, one of the things that we have discovered is that there's there's not really um, an obvious consensus. We are not of one mind about exactly what this pathway should look like. So we're sorting through those things. We're working really hard uh, to be able to do that. And it's in times like this that I begin to think about uh, what it must have been like for someone like John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement back in 18th century England, uh, who was who was working in a time much like ours in terms of what was happening societal uh, in the societal framework that he did his ministry in. Uh, it was the throes of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, there was great concentration of people in the cities. Uh, there was massive uh, poverty and social diseases of all kinds. And <clears throat> that's where he was working. Uh, that's the environment in which he started this movement. And what he found was that when people practiced their faith on a regular basis, that the grace of God worked in the practice of faith in order to help uh, help sanctify the people, to make them more holy, to help them understand that God was at present in their lives all the time. One of my favorite parts of the the Wesleyan tradition is something that we call the Wesley Covenant Prayer. And the origins of it are a little bit murky, but uh, but it has become a traditional part of what many United Methodist churches do when we begin a new year. You may remember this because back in January, on the first Sunday of the year, we, uh, we did uh, aspects of the Wesley Covenant service in our worship, and we used this prayer. Over the years, it has become a particularly important prayer to me. It stands up there with, uh, with some of those um, that are offered by saints of the church throughout the years, like uh, throughout the centuries, like uh, the prayer of St. Francis and others. Uh, and I'd like to read it for you now. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me, with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. There's one troubling phrase in there. Uh, well, maybe more than one, but <laughs> um, the one that I'm thinking of is put me to suffering. I believe that God's vision for the world is that suffering will be eliminated. 
And yet at the same time, we are on a long journey. We are a part of a history that goes um, well before us and will go on long after us in a sense. And what we hope is that we are a part of eliminating the suffering of the world around us. That's one of the, one of the reasons why we as United Methodists embracing what, what John Wesley called the general rules of the church focus so much on um, trying not to do harm. But we also try to do as much good as we can. And those are sometimes conflicting interests, or at least they seem to be. That's where part of our struggle is in re-entering our sacred spaces. Because we know that even though there is this sort of light at the end of the tunnel, that there are still concerns for many people. We want to be as inclusive as possible. That's a part of the vision of the Open Door Churches. A stated part of our vision is to include as many people as possible. And this is a hard conversation for us to have. So I'd like to take that phrase and I'd like to tell you something I learned about that phrase. I had not particularly spent a lot of time thinking about that phrase, but what I heard as I was working to prepare for worship back in January was that there were many people who were troubled by that phrase, as if uh, we were embracing the suffering that is around us instead of working against it. But what I learned about that is that it's somewhat of an archaic meaning of that. And it, it might help for us to think about it in terms of the term long suffering, which essentially is the same as saying perseverance that we do not give up hope when things get difficult. But instead, what we do is we entrust ourselves to God and we believe that God will carry us through whatever the circumstances are to get us to the other side. We are God's people. My friends, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.